Well, all right, Kristen Jensen, welcome back to the program. Thanks so much, Jonathan. Yeah, you know, I was just looking through our archives uh, before we, we got on here and realized this is your third time to be on the Pure Sex Radio program. And all the way back in 2016 is when we had you on the first time to talk about, of course, kind of your flagship resource that you created, Good Pictures, Bad Pictures. And then two years later in 2018, we had you back to talk about that really neat um, kind of second resource that you created from that, which was Good Pictures, Bad Pictures Junior, which was really kind of for younger kids. And now I'm excited to have you back to talk about um, this brain defense digital safety course that you've created. But before we get into some of the, the nuts and bolts of what is that, who's it for, all of that, can you kind of just tell us a little bit about um, the work that you do overall and just defend young minds and just some of the things that have gotten you into this space of work? Yeah, well, yes, thank you so much. I uh, Defend Young Minds is all about helping parents mostly, but we have therapists and pediatricians and anyone that cares for children in our audience. Uh, we want to help raise empowered, resilient, screen smart kids. So kids that can benefit from all of the great things that uh, technology and the digital world offer us while avoiding the negative and harmful and outright bad things out there that are bad for them. So we take in quite a, a large, um, you know, we're all within this, uh, we're all trying to help kids keep safe from pornography. But that also implies keeping safe from sexual predators, keeping safe from sextortion. You know, it's all within what we're trying to do is help kids grow up so they can be happy, healthy adults and um, and get a, a kind of a, a heads up. Because if we don't talk to them early about some of the, the threats that they will encounter, um, we kind of leave them open, leave them vulnerable. And so that's what we're trying to do is help kids be prepared so that they know how to react and respond when they're hit with a new digital situation, a new situation that could be harmful. Um, so they have a chance. Cause I don't know about you, Jonathan, but when I am caught off guard, I don't do very well. I'm not Mm -hmm. Very good at that. So I like yeah. to be prepared. I was going to say, I don't think any of us, if we're, if we feel unprepared, do very well in a situation that requires us to be prepared. So I think that's pretty, pretty common. Now you've obviously been uh, doing this kind of work for a while, because I mean, even if we had you on back in 2016, that's at least six years, you know, and, and at that point in time, I mean, good pictures, bad pictures have been around for a while. Uh, how did you get into this space? And can you tell us kind of the progression from when you first started creating these materials to what's landed you here with what you're doing with uh, the Brain Defense Digital Safety sure. Course? Yeah, I'd love to. Well, uh, back in 2014 was when we published Good Pictures, Bad Pictures, Porn Proofing Today's Young Kids. And I had worked for three years on doing this book I tested it multiple times, made endless edits and changes, and really honed it so that it was very um, wordsmith, I guess, because it's a conversation between a mother and a son, and also the dad comes in, and just teaching him what pornography is, why it's harmful, and what to do when you see it. And the reason I got into it is because I... Got a call from a mother of a large family and she, her, her son, her oldest son had been, he been caught um, molesting his younger brothers and sisters and uh, porn was involved. And um, I've talked to him since and he went to treatment. Uh, we we're in Washington state. So there was a treatment program. Uh, but he said all the boys that he was in there with, all of them were basically sexualized by pornography 
And then they went on to perpetrate on other younger children. So I could see pornography was such a problem. And I just, I don't know, I woke up the morning after I talked to this mother and had this very strong impression that I should, you know, that I needed to figure out a way to warn the young children early enough so that they could have a chance to uh, respond well and proactively. So yeah, that was the beginning. I started actually in 2011 and got the book out there in 2014. And the rest is kind of history. It was number one bestseller on Amazon for all these years. And it's amazing. I, I couldn't, if somebody would have told me, you know, 10 years ago, it's almost coming up on 10 years that I was going to be doing this. I would have been like, yeah, right. No, mm -hmm. I've already said I wasn't going to do anything with porn. I don't want, I don't want to have to do anything with that subject. But I, I think sometimes when you, I don't know, you, you can change, you can get a, you know, you, God can give you a heart to do something. And although good pictures, bad pictures, it's not religious. Um, you know, I have faith and uh, that God is is helping all of us and, and, and leading and guiding us. So, yeah. So uh, you've you've created this new course, and I'd love for you to just kind of give us a little bit of an overview of what the Brain Defense Digital Safety course is. And then maybe we can dive into a little bit of of how it how it's going to be, how it can best be used. Who is it for? You know, just what's the process of, of parents and others getting connected to this? Yeah. So uh, we had, uh, I guess the initial thing was that we had uh, schools, Christian schools, Catholic schools coming to us and they, and they still do. They buy the book for their kids or students. And, uh, but we kept hearing this kind of need for a course or a curriculum. And I've, I went to conferences and they would say, oh, where's, you know, where's a curriculum for this? And I swore I wasn't going to be the one that did it. But again, <laughs> somehow um, I felt impressed to go down that road. And what we created was beyond my wildest expectations. It, it just came out so much better. And basically what it is, is kids are going to encounter a variety of situations when they're online, when they're in digital spaces. And pornography is one of them, but then there's bullying and there's predators. Um, and there's a lot of situations like that. So we created a comprehensive course. You can teach it in five days. You can teach it in 10 days. You can teach it in 20 days, however fast or slow you want to take it. And it's just open and go because it's videos um, and workbooks. There's a script for the teacher or the parent. We have a family version. We have um, a version for classrooms and schools. So we created it so that it could be used in a variety of different um, situations, like a family or a, a classroom. Okay. And... Uh, yeah, I can go into a little further about like exactly what we teach, but it's... yeah, well, I, I would like to get, I would like to know. So I've, I'm sure you know there's parents out there that are saying, okay, so what age kids are we talking about that this is really Sorry. targeting? Yeah, I should have said that at the beginning. So it's ages seven to eleven, kind of like my book, because those are the ages that these kids are unfortunately getting exposed not only to pornography, but to dangerous people online, if they're online, even playing video games. So we need to warn them and set them up. We need to give them what we call digital defense skills. Mm -hmm. And when they have digital defense skills, they have a chance to make the right decision and to protect themselves because, you know, they don't come with Velcro. They're not gonna be with us all the time, right? Um, every second of every minute. So we need to, we owe it to them. They deserve to be prepared 
to thrive in the digital age, to thrive in these digital situations. Technology is not going away. Um, but one of the things that we teach is that we teach the ch kids the importance of, you know, limiting screen time. We teach them the importance of uh, keeping, you know, healthy screen time habits. So not doing it late at night and, you know, making sure you're not on screen so long that it's important to have in real life experiences. So we really like to, we, we start out teaching just really good, healthy tech habits. And even if you've taught this at home with your own kids, um, it's, it's really helpful for kids to hear it from another credible voice, um, mm -hmm. which leads me to the fact that we, it's not me teaching the course. Um, it'd be kind of like that teacher in the Charlie Brown, you know, wah, 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 wah. that's what it'd probably be like. <laughs> but we have teenagers that are positive role models and they teach the, the material in the videos and they uh, tell humorous jokes. I mean, very appropriate. They are, they use analogies. The kids love, we call them the brain gang and the kids love the brain gang. They really do. They totally love the brain gang and they have their favorites. And um, it's fun. Yeah. So break down for us a little bit of what, what your, I mean, you mentioned a little bit about just kind of basic, you know, digital um, safety kind of things. Um, what is, what are you really trying to cover throughout the whole course? What are the main right. elements that you're really hitting on? Yeah. So again, we start with that foundation of good tech habits and we talk about how habits our, how habits are formed in the brain and how they become like a super highway, you know, your, your neurons. And so we put in a little brain science and then we talk about um, addiction and how addictions are created. And we talk about the thinking brain and the feeling brain. Um, and then we get into on the third lesson, we get into, you know, what is pornography and, three ways that pornography is really harmful for a growing brain. All of this is, again, persuading the child, teaching the child, because ultimately it's, they're going to have the choice. Um, but then we, we talk about um, the can do plan and what you can do when you remember pornography. We go through that. Uh, we also then end with being responsible, being screen responsible, being a good digital citizen, um, being honest online, having integrity, being the same person in real life as you are online, um, and what to do when you're, you may find somebody in a bullying situation or yourself. Um, so all of that is included in the brain defense digital safety curriculum. It's a great stand in for, um, you know, uh, any kind of digital literacy, digital, um, uh, program that you would need. Mm -hmm. Now I know that, um, we talked about this briefly uh, or a little bit when you were on last time, but that's been four years. So I think we need to, I'd love for you to revisit it. You mentioned the the can do plan. Can you mm -hmm. help parents know what that is and, and like uh, just briefly just kind of give us an overview of what, what, what is that can do plan? Yeah. So what we know is that kids need a definition of pornography or other things that they may encounter. They need to know why it's harmful, but then they need a plan. You have to set them up with a plan. I mean, when you think of soldiers going into battle, they need the, knowledge. Um, they need to understand the threats, but they also need to have a plan, a battle plan. And the can do plan is the battle plan. It's exactly the five-step plan, exactly what you do when you see pornography. Um, and the first three steps, C-A-N, the first three steps are uh, what you would want to tell a child to do 
when they see it. So, so in that moment, right? So the first one is, um, close my eyes. So the longer you're looking at it and drawn into it, the more it's solidified in your brain, right? The, and so you want to turn away as soon as possible and you want to, um, uh, make sure that you tell a responsible adult you want to, um, I'm like, you can edit this, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I am like spacing out. It's no worries. Well, uh, um, it's one of the, it's one of my greatest fears when people ask me about my books. I'm like, oh my goodness, I wrote it and I, I... <laughs> okay. Okay, back to the can-do plan. Okay, so the second step of the can-do plan is A, and that's always tell a trusted adult. And you know that if kids keep this a secret or if they don't know who they can talk to, they'll just keep it inside and they'll be tempted, more tempted to go back and look. Anyway, we always want them to know that they should come and tell us. And then N is name it when you see it. That brings the thinking brain online. Um, so that's pornography. Um, the other two steps, you can find out more information in the book, but they're basically like, once you have this memory in your mind, it keeps popping back up. What do you do to neutralize it? And how can you use your, how can you have your thinking brain talk to your feeling brain and keep it uh, under control when it comes to, you know, the inclinations that you may feel to look at pornography? So all of that is taught in the book, but it's also taught in a, I would say, a deeper way by the brain gang in brain defense. And the thing that I love about it is that there's been some research and kids really love learning from their older peers. They are very influenced by their older peers. And so that's why we brought the brain gang into this, because um, kids really pay attention. And um, they hear a lot from their parents and they should. But this is another layer, another layer of credibility for that message. And having older kids say, yeah, we don't do this. We don't get into this. This isn't good. It's invaluable. It's really, mm -hmm. really powerful for the kids. Yeah. Now, obviously, it's it's you've called it brain defense, you know, digital safety course. Why is it so important that you are you're helping uh, kids understand that this is very much an internal struggle, an internal thing that is happening, even though all of the seemingly dangerous stuff feels external, like pornography and temptation and all these other kinds of things or, or predators? Why is it important that you are focusing on that internal component, the fact that you've literally called it brain defense? Yeah. Well, we also talk about the internal filter because there are filters, you know, for, for all of your devices and your Wi-Fi, but kids need to have an internal filter, which is really a conviction and their own set of defenses, right? So that, because in the moment, you know, I've heard of stories of kids looking at pornography on a laptop in the same room with their parents. So they're really good at hiding things, <laughs> some of these kids. In any case, um, the defense, the brain defense, you know, we, we've all got one precious brain and kids need to defend it. And we need to also be in, I guess the reason, you know, we used to go by um, protect young minds and now we are defend young minds. And the reason we changed was because we felt that um, defend was, when you talk about defending, you're talking about defending against a known enemy, right? You're talking about uh, protecting can be, you know, wax will protect your car, right? It's, it, it, it's not quite the same, but defending is when you, there's a known enemy. And there are known enemies out there for our kids. <clears throat> there are predators. Pornography is definitely predatory. They are looking for your kids to get them hooked. So we just love the whole defense thing. So 
you know, pornography can really change the brain structure. It can harm the brain. Addiction definitely shrinks the prefrontal cortex. We have all of these studies now, MRI studies, and um, we know this is happening. So yeah, kids need to be taught to defend their brain. And that's yeah. why we call it brain defense. Now, uh, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be parents that are listening to this that say, oh, no, my, you know, my kids, my kid is 13 or, you know, doesn't fit in with that in, within that seven to 11. It, is there any benefit mm -hmm. like on the margins, like if they've got a kid that's a little bit older or or how, how would you recommend someone that that don't have kids right in that age range, but they're going, man, this sounds really valuable. Yeah. You know, it really just depends on your kid, right? So we have noticed that boys don't have, you can show it to an older boy a lot easier than an older girl who has become sophisticated. <laughs> and the, this is really, these are fun. They make kind of jokes and, um, and you can go younger too. I've had people show this to five and six year olds. So without any problems, uh, I mean, the workbook will be a little bit beyond them, but yeah. Um, so really it depends. Cause I have had people say, we're going to buy this for our middle school, like kids. And we'll say, well, it's a little young for them. And they'll say, we don't care. There's nothing else out there. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it just depends on your kids. And honestly, Jonathan, I watch this and I laugh at all the jokes. So it shows how unsophisticated I am. <laughs> I mean, I I think it's hysterical, but um, you know, some kids are very sensitive about that. They don't want to I don't know. I think it's great for seven to eleven. You can probably get away with a little older, depending on your child. And maybe you'll set it up and say, I know this is for younger kids, but, you know, I still want to go through it with you and see if we can't learn something. Yeah. And and obviously it's it's digital. So what's the best way for a parent or maybe even a teacher to school or someone else who is working with kids, let's say a, maybe a youth uh, you know, young, uh, like a children's director at a church or something like that. What are some of the yeah. best ways then for them to facilitate this course? And what if some of them are saying, Hey, I don't, I've never taught. I mean, yeah, I've got kids or I'm, I'm with kids, but I'm, I don't consider myself a teacher. What would you say right. to them in terms of helping them feel the confidence to use this resource? Well, first of all, you are a teacher. You teach your kids so much. You are their main teacher if you're a parent. We make it so easy. The instruction manual just has here, say this, do this, press this. And it's just easy, easy, easy. You know, it's, it's just a, a slight introduction. Play the video, have them do the workbook, you know, and that's pretty much it. And then there's a... Um, like a family connection letter with the family version. And it gives you role plays to try, it gives you other questions to talk about. So um, we made it super, super easy because we know parents are busy. Teachers are really busy. They don't want something that they need a lot of prep work. We've t piloted this in several schools and it's super easy. And we've got, so if they go to braindefense.org or if they go to defendyoungminds.com, and they look under courses for kids. Um, they they will find this. Well, it says I think courses uh, for kids, for families, and for groups and co-ops and uh, schools. So you can find there's two different pages, and you can look at the videos. If you scroll all the way down, I think there's a place where you can even uh, download a free, like a sample if you want. Um, and um, yeah, so it's and it's priced. It's a one time fee. This is not a subscription. So once you buy it, you've got it. And um, yeah, it's you, just an investment really in your children's well being and their emotional yeah. well being too. When you think about, uh, you know, when you were creating this resource and kind of thinking about. 
because because anything any content that we create any resource that we create we've we've often got a uh, a vision of what the ideal outcome would be for somebody connecting with this resource mm-hmm. as you think about that with this what would be the ideal outcome that you would want to see in kids lives for having gone through this course when kids go through this course they're going to know they're not alone they're going to know that there are other kids out there that are older and that are rooting for them. I think that is the power of that brain gang. They're also going to know what to do when they're faced with various situations online. And so I guess the outcome is that they're prepared. They're prepared to make a good choice, a good, healthy decision that will keep their brain um, free from addiction and themselves free from a lot of trauma. Mm -hmm. And just lastly, what, what um, just kind of word of encouragement would you want to give to parents out there as they're thinking about the realities of all the challenges that their kids are going to have to face in the world in which we're living. And sometimes that can be an overwhelming like panic attack yeah. that can come on as a parent, just well, yeah. uh, having been doing this and working in this space and producing these kind of materials and hearing tons of stories, what would you say to the parents out there to just encourage them? Yeah. Well, what I would say is that I have a lot of admiration for you for listening to this podcast, for mm-hmm. trying to, uh, find resources. So my hat's off to you. It, it's never been easy to raise kids, but I think it's never been harder than it is right now because we've gotten all this technology, but the laws have not caught up so that we are protecting our kids. It's like back in the day when, you know, you were giving kids cocaine for a toothache or something, you know, Mm -hmm. we have not caught up to protect the kids. But like I said, it's very easy. And once you get started, it gets easier. And then the burden lifts and the worry starts to come off because you're being proactive. You're doing something uh, to protect your kids and to solve the problem uh, rather than just looking the other way or crossing your fingers, you know, and hoping that you know, your kid will be the exception. And I think that any time we take a step towards preparing our children, protecting them, teaching them, helping them have defensive, uh, digital defense skills, anytime we do that, uh, we're going to feel better. We're going to feel, and, and they deserve, they deserve to have this information and this training just like you wouldn't throw the keys at them for your SUV and say, you know, go have a fun time. Um, you would make sure that they're very well trained so that they'll be safe. And we don't always do that for the internet superhighway, right? But we should. So I think that we've made it so that it's super easy and uh, for parents and we're just getting out there. We're really pleased with how many parents are jumping in and getting brain defense and um, teaching it to their, to their children. Yeah. Well, once again, uh, uh, let, let our listeners know where they can go to get the brain defense course. And then also just any other resources that you guys provide. So we have tons of resources on defendyoungminds.com. You'll find free guides. You'll find some guides that are a very small price. You'll find our books and you'll find brain defense, digital safety. And we even have a payment plan that makes it much more affordable. Uh, So check it out. You can see a few videos and see if this might be right for your kids, but uh, do something um, because your kids deserve they need, they need to know this. They deserve to know this. And no child deserves to face the porn industry and all of the predators out there alone. They need to have some training. Brain defense is like the easiest way to do it. 
And believe me, it's memorable. These kids remember these jokes. They remember these stories. You know, you can tell kids blah, 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 blah. But what we do is we tell stories. There are stories. These characters become real and they tell stories. And those are memorable. And so we've used a lot of great methodology. And, you know, all of this is research-based. So uh, we've priced it at a very affordable price. We want every family to be able to get get this training for their child. And um, hopefully we'll get it into a lot more schools as schools become aware and also start to feel their duty of care for providing training on digital devices. Mm -hmm. Well, Kristen, this has been great. Uh, thank you again so much for the the work that you've done and continue to do. And, and we are so grateful to have you on the show today. Thanks, Jonathan. It's been great talking to you. And thank you for all of your work. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Well, listeners, uh, we want you to go to defendyoungminds.com to learn more about all those resources and certainly about the Brain Defense Digital Safety Course. We'll put all of that in the show notes so you've got easy access to that. But we are grateful that you've been with us and we look forward to seeing you back here again next time on the Pure Sex Radio Program. Take care. Hey.